moving forward with the Decker team. Moving forward together with the Decker team. We at the Decker team have enjoyed for over 35 years helping people, not only selling and buying real estate, also helping people build their finances, helping people build their self-worth, helping people build their faith, and helping people strengthen, heal, and flourish in their relationships. 35 years of helping people build their life and their home. And today, we're going to discover what are the true benefits of homesteading. And I'm talking mm. with Ryan Decker, my son, who's really gotten passionate and mm. involved in homesteading. And and he will uh, pick up the phone and cheer my ear off for yeah. half an hour, an hour, if I let him <laughs> Whatever I talk get. <laughs> about farming. And uh, I just love going over and helping him on the, yeah. on the homestead and Very grateful doing do. things. It's, it's nice to use your hands sometimes, mm. you know. So, Ryan, what are the benefits of homesteading that you've found? You've been really into it for probably the last year. Yeah, so I went from like, the farmhouse, right? right, the farmhouse took a lot. <laughs> we went from kind of enjoying, you know, gardens and uh, dogs and being outside and in a, you know, couple hours a day kind of thing to then moving to more homesteading to then almost farmers. So we're kind of on that cusp right. of... So you went from you know, about a three quarter acre lot yeah. to uh, eighteen acres, roughly, or yeah, just acres? over eighteen, yeah. just over eighteen acres. Okay, yeah. and you can do a lot on eighteen oh, acres. I mean. Can you ever? And I mean, it, it depends on you know what you want to accomplish, but you can do a lot even on five acres, ten acres. You know, your mm -hmm. your land um, will also dictate what you can do, but it'll also drive you to new things. It's very interesting how. Being in that environment causes me to want to do things I had no desire for before. Right. Okay. And so the, you're talking about the land now, the the mm -hmm. quality of the soil, whether it's sandy loam yeah. or or rocky or yeah, the space, or the air, the trees. Like if we had forests, we could do pasture raised or not pasture raised, sorry, forest raised pigs. But mm -hmm. we don't have a lot of wood lots, so now pasture raised chickens and sheep and cows is a better option for us. Mm -hmm. So your land and what you're buying, there, there's so many different options. And right. Getting the best out of the land. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So I've seen a change in you in the last year and your, yeah. your, um, your health, your energy, mm -hmm. your, um, you know, and it, what's kind of neat is you can do this as well as your job. Yeah. You don't have to, you're not a, a hundred percent a farmer. Right. Right. Yeah. And, and it's a passion. It's a hobby. Mm -hmm. You're so excited to it. You, you know, you don't have to go out and do things because there's lots of things to do at yeah. home. <laughs> and it's it's interesting, like vacations and stuff. We can still do them. We have someone who can uh, take over for the farm when we're gone. But there's you don't really want them as much because you're so happy and pleased with where you are and where you're headed. And it's just a very different experience. Right. Now, for most people, the winter, if yeah. you're in homesteading, is a tougher space to to Not do this things winter. but this winter's been awesome. it's been super mild <laughs> but you also have a large outbuilding which yes. you've, you've now renovated yeah and okay tell them what you're going to put in there <laughs> you want to know so in our outbuilding we are putting in quail a lot of quail and um we've insulated it and we've created some really cool designs to give these quail an amazing life um, very, very healthy for them as well as people who Tell us a little eggs. bit about that because what did you research what quail like to do? Yeah, so when we researched quail, a lot of them are still kept in battery cages. Uh, and I don't want to get too far into detail, which is really sad to me. Um, but their number one thing that they love is dust baths. They go in there and they fluff up. It cleans their feathers and uh, mental health for them. It's incredible. And not wanting to take that away from them, on a fairly large scale, we had to design something that wasn't designed yet. So we have designed and we're starting to replicate on, not mass, but about 48 of them, um, dust baths that self-clean every day through gravity and the eggs roll out. And so you still have all the benefits of um, cages without the negatives. So mm -hmm. learning to you know, create things for the animal. And I think as humans, we forget that. We we live in a house in a box and we forget that there's things that feed our soul and, you know, the way God designed us, like getting outside in the garden. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I'm turning this back to the homesteading thing where, you know, we also need to be 
developing our infrastructure in our lives to really bless us instead mm -hmm. of it being, you know, dreary in the winter. What can right. you do to add? Right. So on your homestead, you did some, uh, you created tractors. No, yeah. they call them tractors. But yeah, they're, <laughs> they're, they're really not a tractor. I think it's, uh, yeah, it's basically a mini barn that you can pull along um, the field. So the chickens get fresh grass every day. And they're never in their uh, manure for more than a day, which is not typical for farm animals. So mm -hmm. learning these uh, practices, there, there's so many of them and they've been around forever, um, but bringing them so, back. So when you do a, a meat bird, you yeah. you move those birds every day onto fresh yeah, once grass. Once to twice a day, yeah. And then they're they're eating the bugs and the, mm -hmm. and the grass. And, the, yeah. and, the, and I noticed like a couple of weeks after where they had been. Yeah. The grass is perfect. It's so perfect. I mean, <laughs> the first couple of days it's manure. It's pretty gross. But after that, the manure soaks into the, the soil and you're getting, you know, so many nutrients that have been missing um, from all these chemical fertilizers and different things that we add to lawns and grasses. Mm -hmm. um, and it revitalizes the soil and the earthworms and, you know, creates just so much life. Mm -hmm. So if you would like to continue this conversation mm. that we're having, um, fire us an email and become part of our community, the Decker Team community. Send a message to together at deckerteam.com. And we'd love to continue the conversation. Maybe we'll send you some links to some, uh, some podcasts, some, yeah. some uh, blogs that we've written. Um, and Ryan is just passionate about this. So if you think hey, maybe I'd like to buy a little hobby farm and get mm -hmm. into this. Ryan's your guy to find you a yeah, place. We'll, we'll look. We'll He's find amazing. you the right one for you. Yeah. And for me, I found there is pride. Like this mm. last couple of years, we've been using the, the raised garden. We just added another one this year. Garlic is one of the things we love growing. Mm -hmm. And because we can easily store it and use it all year. Yeah. Um, but winter keepers candace introduced me to winter keeper tomatoes and this last january was we ate we had company and we put on the salad um tomato and that tomato came from our garden and it had lasted from mm -hmm. the fall till january so there's all kinds of different produce that has different life cycles, right? Yeah. Like, like you, squashes and things have long life mm -hmm. cycle and that kind of thing. So what other ways can you, you talked about, um, sp uh, not spaghetti, but you can do spaghetti sauce, but you did uh, chilies. Yeah. With I your excess chilies. tomatoes, you brew up big batches mm -hmm. and then you freeze it in quantities. What other ways can you keep food for the rest of the winter? So there's a few that are fairly cost effective, like freezing. You know, you already have a freezer, just chop it up. You may need to uh, blanch. Uh, blanch it. Thank mm -hmm. you. I was going to say boil, but that you blanch it um, and it'll last longer. Uh, some people can, some people mm -hmm. freeze dry, which is a more expensive and um, time consuming to get mm -hmm. into, but there, there's so many benefits to different well, I think Candice gives us some uh, chilies, right? Little yeah. red chili peppers that she yep. freeze dries or, or no, air she, dries those. Yeah. And so then those are great. You just throw them in, a, in a stew yeah. or whatever and the flavors come back out. Um, yeah, and your kids are loving this, right? Mm -hmm. and they're, they're not eating as much processed food. Yeah, and there's something different with a, a garden vegetable. It just hits different in your stomach. Mm -hmm. it, it feels fuller, more... Just something just more there, right. something grown in the earth. Right. And when you get to be a part of that and your kids get to be a part of it, it's mm -hmm. pretty cool. So what can you do where you are right now? And we're grateful that you joined us on Life's Inside Track because when we move forward together, together, we got this. Moving forward with the Decker team. Moving forward.